Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today on the channel, we're gonna be talking about the number one survival and preparedness item that every single prepper should have in their emergency kit. Now, you know, oftentimes I'll say things like, get this before it's illegal. Usually I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but this time I'm 100% serious because it's already illegal in a lot of places. So let's get to it. For any of the body armor you see in today's video, be sure to go and check out Premier Body Armor. I'll post the link in the description below. You can get 10% off all of this stuff using coupon code PREPPER. They only use domestically sourced materials. Everything is made in the USA. They also use some proprietary materials that offer some unique features that set them apart from the competition. So be sure to go and check them out. They also ship to Canada. Just remember, make sure you know your provincial laws. All right, guys, so even though no one can afford ammo anymore because the price is sky high, there's a good chance a lot of the bad guys already have the stuff stashed away. And it makes no sense to have thousands of rounds of ammunition and no armor. That said, if you don't have a GUN yet, go buy your GUN first because in the very least, you can use that for hunting. Gun first, body armor second. So I'm pretty sure in most of the United States, body armor is 100% legal. I don't think you need a permit for it, although I could be wrong. In Canada, however, the laws are gonna vary from province to province. In some provinces, you don't need anything at all. In Saskatchewan, for instance, you don't need anything to buy body armor. However, in other provinces, you may need a purchase and acquisition gun license. And in other provinces like Alberta, you actually need a special permit in order to own any kind of body armor. So before you run out there and buy all kinds of body armor, make sure you understand the laws of the region that you live in. So there's plenty of great videos that break down all the nuances of what types of body armor you should use for what situation. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today, but the main purpose of today's video is to try to figure out what is the best type of body armor for preppers. Because the circumstances that preppers are going to be using the body armor in may differ from that of civilians, military, law enforcement, or even paramilitary. In fact, it can cover the entire spectrum. It really all depends on the type of the disaster and the degree to which law and order within your region has been compromised. There may come a point when law enforcement is not able to effectively police an area. At that point, the burden of personal responsibility for your own security, self-defense, and safety is gonna fall entirely in your hands. That's when body armor may well be a lifesaver. So today we're gonna to talk about the different types of body armor ranging from the most discreet to the most obvious. We're also gonna be talking about the different shapes of the actual plates. We're gonna talk about the materials that they're made of. And we're also gonna talk about the National Institute of Justice classification system and what exactly different types of body armor can protect against. So over here, the most discreet option is a plate that goes inside your backpack. That's something that I would say you could use right now, every day. Very lightweight, has level 3A protection. We're gonna talk about what that is in a minute. This is probably among the most practical things that you can have. And it's a great starter piece. You won't even really notice it's in there. It weighs virtually nothing, I would say, a couple pounds. For some people, that's a lot. This is gonna be the most gray man option because Nobody's ever going to know that it's in there. And if we're talking about just surviving an active shooter scenario, uh, surviving a robbery, uh, something like this to just have as a shield in and of itself is very versatile in that respect. So obviously you're not going to have both the front and back protection like you would with a vest, but you can wear this on your front if you need to. You could wear it on your back, of course, or you could just use it as a shield. And because it's not uh, on your person, if you have a child with you who perhaps doesn't have that kind of protection and you wanna maybe offer them some shielding while you're escaping a place or something like that, you can use it like that. So it works great as an all around shield. So you can't go wrong with having a backpack body armor insert. 
Next, if you're living in, say, Chicago or Detroit or one of these really rough cities, maybe you might wanna be getting a little bit more protection on your person at all times. Then you might go for something like this T-shirt, which is incredibly discreet and has a body armor insert on the front and back. If the situation gets a little bit more intense, let's say after the first 72 hours of the breakdown of rule of law, and you know there's a good chance that you are going to encounter some kind of resistance, you may wanna get yourself a stab resistant and a bullet resistant vest like this. This is a level 3A body armor protection. This is fairly discreet, offers a lot more coverage than does the t-shirt, and you could put this underneath a sweater, a t-shirt, or a jacket. Last but not least is the Mad Max, okay? Something like this is only gonna be worn in either a war zone or a full-on grid down, you know, end of the world as we know it. Uh, there's no sense in trying to be the gray man type scenario. All of these three are gray man. And they're, for preppers, this is very important because something like this could very easily draw more unwanted attention to you. Now, if we were, in a war zone type situation, the type of plate carrier you wear is gonna say a lot about your role in the war. So you may decide to get some press insignia and put that on there to try to show your neutrality. Uh, getting a vest that's blue, that's the universal symbol for neutrality, uh, getting a blue helmet to accompany it. Now, in most normal times, the most likely form of gunfire that you're going to encounter is from a handgun. The majority of crimes and shootings are handguns. So for that reason, these three options are going to be the most useful in normal times. But because as preppers, we're always trying to be ready for the worst case scenario. The idea is that in a full-blown Mad Max without rule of law, there's gonna be a lot more rifles around. And as such, you may need that level three plus or level four body armor, which would protect you against rifle fire. In those situations, that's when you may have to step things up to a actual plate carrier if you want that level of resistance. But for 99% of occasions, most of these will suffice in terms of offering protection. So there's something called the NIJ standard. This means the National Institute of Justice Standards, and they specify five levels of ballistic performance for body armor. The first three levels, level 2A, 2, and 3A, are typically softer armors that are much more flexible. Level three and four are typically hard armor that are designed to protect against rifle threats, and level four protecting against armor-piercing rounds. So one thing to consider with purchasing body armor is the weight factor, okay? So the heavier the plate, obviously the more ballistic protection it's going to offer. However, the comfort is generally going to decrease. You need to bear in mind, as a prepper, you're carrying a bug out bag, you're carrying your main rifle, you're carrying your sidearm, you're carrying ammunition. Of course, if you add 20, 30 pound plate carrier on there, then your mobility is gonna be drastically restricted. That's the weight of a lot of people's bug out bag alone. So to have to wear level four body armor around, you better be prepared to be in incredibly good shape. Something like this, a backpack uh, plate is gonna be much lighter. It's only gonna weigh a couple pounds. Same thing goes with the soft armor on the t-shirt or with even this vest. It only weighs a few pounds. So this is something you're gonna wanna keep in mind. There's gonna be that trade-off between mobility, flexibility, agility, and ballistic protection. Okay, so there's different types of cuts for body armor. There's what's called a full cut, which is just a rectangular cut, which usually is an insert that goes into a shirt like this. And this is often used as a back plate for side protection, or it's inserted into a backpack or something like this. There's also the shooter's cut, which is one of the most common cuts. It's rectangular with top corners angled to allow for better arm movement and weapon shouldering. This is typically worn in the front of carrier vests. There's also the swimmer's cut, which is a more extreme clip cut, 
which extends further down the side of the plate rather than a 45 degree cutoff of the corner, which allows for the most shoulder and arm movement. This is for highly active operators in disaster relief teams. This type of plate, however, may offer less coverage than the shooter's cut. And last but not least is the SAPI or small arms protective insert cut. The SAPI cut plates basically have a 45 degree or closed symmetrical clip and are radius rounded corners. There are four general types of materials that bulletproof vests are made out of. Bear in mind that bulletproof vest is kind of a misnomer because no vest is entirely bulletproof. Kevlar plates are classified as soft armor. They're gonna provide protection against low to medium velocity firearm rounds. Many of them will not be able to handle fire from high velocity rifles. The bottom line is Kevlar in itself only makes soft body armor. Other materials such as steel, ceramic, and polyethylene are gonna be used to create armor plates that reinforce the soft body armor. Up next is steel. Now steel ballistic plates are arguably the most popular products, okay? This is level four body armor right here. They are used in conjunction with carrier vests like you see here, which are made of Kevlar sheets and Kevlar fabric. The plates are inserted specifically into designated pockets within the carriers. Now, steel armor plates are used to protect against heavy gunfire. The body armor combination of carrier vests and steel plates can either be rated as level three or level four. One of the most impressive aspects of steel armor plates is that they can handle multiple bullets in the same spot. This is unlike ceramic plates, which cannot do this. And only steel is deemed tough enough to stop armor piercing bullets. It is the industry standard that steel armor plates are coated with multiple layers of Paxcon. Paxcon is a tough bed liner fabric, so when the steel plate is hit, especially with a powerful bullet, many of the tiny fragments are gonna wanna chip off and fly off in all directions. This shrapnel can uh, cause injury. That coating is going to protect that from what they call spalling. One of the major drawbacks of steel, however, is the weight. But if you're on a full-on war zone and you're facing rifle fire, then there's probably nothing that can beat a steel plate. So we've talked about Kevlar, we've talked about steel. Now there's also something called polyethylene. And depending on the manufacturer, this could be a proprietary. Now one of the most impressive aspects of polyethylene armor plates is that they can take multiple hits. Unlike ceramic plates and some steel plates, they don't shatter when hit. Therefore they can take multiple hits in the same spot and still prevent the bullets from penetrating. The only downside of polyethylene plates is that they tend to be a little bit more expensive and they may be subject to reduced performance and degradation if used in very warm temperatures. So if you're using it in a desert-like environment, there may be some uh, reduction in performance. Now, there's another type of body armor which is ceramic. These are preferred because they're lighter than steel and they're typically a bit cheaper than polyethylene plates. However, of course, there are going to be limitations. They are classified as a hard type of body armor and in some cases they'll offer equal protection to that that's provided by steel plates. The downside is with ceramic is that they cannot take multiple shots in the same spot and ceramic plates can be fragile so you must take good care of them. Premier Body Armor makes what they call a Level 3 Plus plate. Level 3 Plus is a manufacturer's designation. It's not actually recognized by the National Institute of Justice. These come with a 10 to 15 year warranty, depending on the type that you get. That's almost double or triple the industry standard. I won't get into too much about the details of what it will protect against because it would be a very boring video, but it will protect against 7.6 by 39, 123 grain. It will also protect uh, against 5.56 at 55 grain up to 3,100 feet per second. This is not level four, so it's not gonna uh, protect against your armor piercing rounds. But for most people, for most preppers in particular, this is going to be more than sufficient. It also uses a tiled composite strike face that isolates the trauma to the plate. This is going to allow the plate to be drop resistant. So you're gonna be able to drop this. You can't really do that with ceramic. These things can shatter and it's gonna be truly multi-hit capable. It's ultra lightweight. 
It only weighs about 2.8 pounds. So between the two, it's gonna be about 5.6 pounds. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. It's made of an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene material. That's a mouthful, isn't it? All you need to know is it's very high quality stuff. And with a 10% off discount, it's semi affordable, depending on what your budget is. Now, in terms of level four plates, the only level four plate I have is not one from Premier Body Armor. Uh, these plates tend to be a lot heavier. I can tell you right now, this is about twice the weight of this level three plus. Are you going to need something like this? Possibly, it really depends on the application. Uh, typically, these are made of steel and they're going to have that composite strike place that's going to isolate the trauma as well. These are going to be drop resistant, more so than a ceramic plate, and it's going to be multi-hit capable as well. This one has an expiration date of 2025, so the Premier Body Armor is gonna last you 10 to 15 years. These, this is from a different manufacturer, this is only gonna last till 2025. Now obviously if this is all you have, after 2025, it's gonna be better than nothing, but these materials are subject to degradation over time, and uh, for that reason, they have to put those uh, labels on there. Kind of like car seats for kids. How significant is it? You know, I mean, the manufacturer has to draw the line somewhere, I guess. No matter what level of protection you have, whether it's level two to level four, any protection is better than no protection. It's important that you stay practically minded when it comes to this stuff. Do you really need level four body armor or are the purposes that you're gonna be using it for for everyday use? And for everyday use, the reality is the gunfire that you're likely to encounter is gonna be from a handgun. So you don't need uh, the high level of armor protection. But if you're the person who has everything, you may as well get yourself a plate carrier and some level three plus or level four plates. All right guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget, use coupon code PREPPER for 10% off over at Premier Body Armor. I'll post a link in the description and in the pinned comment. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoy the video, stay safe, stay prepped. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.